And with that out of the way, let's go right ahead into the first bit of news with you know the um in the NBA right now, which is the most recent trade between the Chicago Bulls and the Oklahoma City Thunder. I wasn't expecting um I was not expecting this trade to happen coming in from the Bulls because I really like I, I felt that the Bulls really found value in Alex Caruso and they really found like they really liked him on the on the squad he was providing enough for them both on the offense and the defensive side of the ball I did not expect the team to trade um, a player that is that is incredibly valuable and on top of that I didn't expect them to in return get a player that might not actually be uh, that valuable. Now, you guys know that I'm not a big fan about talking about Giddy. I just don't, I don't like him. I don't like what he allegedly does. I don't like the things that he's gotten in trouble for. I don't like it at all. And I, I'm not going to touch on it because, you know, I just don't want to touch on it. <laughs> Funny joke right there. But Aside from aside from that, all the stuff, you know, off court, I guess it makes sense, like, why the Thunder wanted to trade him away, because, you know, all that off court stuff, it was a little bit of a distraction, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it caused some chemistry issues in the locker room, because, let's face it, when an accusation like his just comes out of the blue, and there's pictures that sort of, um... It, it, that taint a bad look on one of your teammates, you're going to feel some kind of way. And rec- and after that incident, Chet Holmgren unfollowed uh, Josh Giddy on Instagram. So it, it's clear that you know he doesn't want to really be associated with um with Giddy and his things off the court, whatever it might whatever it might be. And you know it's a little bit weird. You know I'm not going to you, if, for those of you guys that know what Josh allegedly did then you guys like you guys know exactly why it's weird and why I just don't want to talk about it um right now and why Chet Holmgren is or like be was being a little bit distant in that time towards Giddy and it makes sense how you know the rest of the locker room and the rest of the um, the rest of the players probably wouldn't feel, or they probably would f- agree with Chet, and they'd feel the same way about Giddy. So this trade, I see this as a great move from the Thunder. This is an A plus trade coming in from the Thunder. The fact that they were able to get rid of um, someone who was going to be a problem in the locker room, and they replaced him with someone who, in my opinion, is so much better and can fill the roles that you need so much better because. While Giddy is, you know, mediocre at doing everything because, you know, he's a, he's pretty good at scoring, he's pretty good at rebounding, he's pretty good at passing, and that's really, like, you know, he's a triple-double, like, he could be a walking triple-double, but he just wasn't. And then in the postseason, he was even worse. He was arguably one of the, he was arguably the biggest reason why the Thunder didn't make it farther in the postseason. His lack of defense, and he had one of the worst box plus minuses compared to anyone in the series. It was horrible. His performance was horrible. And I, after that performance, it almost demanded him that he be traded. Honestly, it's like, yeah, that's, um, that's really like, uh, it's a good move from the Thunder. Now, from the Bulls, on the other hand, that's that's completely different. I don't understand why the Bulls would actually, you know, engage in this trade. I didn't expect them to want to give up a player that valuable and that, um, you know, and you know because he's Alex Caruso. While he is isn't the same offensive talent. He's a great defender and defense and like, you know, his play style, a lot of teams find that incredibly valuable being a three and D player. And I feel like that is a great um, mix for for the Thunder, having a three and D guard to pair along with Shy and uh, help him on sort of like the defensive side of the ball, because Shy, he plays pretty good defense with the steals and things of that nature. Pairing him up with Shy is going to be it's going to be really cool. 
and let me just see. So, and the, on the Bulls' perspective, I mean, get it, acquiring a player like him, like Giddy, I could see it as a little bit of a benefactor as well because he can do a lot more with the ball than than Alex Caruso, I'm sure. Like, you know, given his heights and given his abilities on the court, he could be a pretty good scoring option. However, I'm don't I'm not sure how his off-court antics are going to mesh well with the locker room. I also have no idea how his chemistry is going to be with the Bulls and the locker room with that. I also I'm not entirely sure if the Bulls have the intention of sort of blowing this entire roster up as well because they've recently been engaged in different trade talks. They've been trying to well they've been listening to several trades like for Zach Levine and they really it seems like not to mention DeMar DeRozan is going to be a free agent. It seems as if there are they're trying to put themselves in a situ in a rebuilding situation because now they're looking at trades for Zach Levine and there's also the possibility of the Mar and free agency and given how this sort of era with DeMar and Zach Levine hasn't worked maybe they try to blow up the roster and honestly the Bulls they've been trying to trade Zach Levine for a while so maybe this is finally the year where they get to where they get to finally do that but this is like um let me know in the comments what you guys think of this trade I'm just looking at an article right here and um in Chicago uh, Giddy's fate might be tied with the rest of the roster. If DeMar and Zach come back, his weakness as a shooter will likely continue to hold um, Josh Giddy back. He's best suited as a full-time point guard, and those on-ball reps won't be available if DeRozan and Levine are still there. And not on top of that, Kobe White being the point guard also doesn't help your situation, especially since because you know Josh Giddey's much better with being a much more ball dominant player. And why did they engage in this trade? Well, one of the biggest reasons why this trade was even engaged in the first place was because the Thunder were looking to move Josh Giddey over to the bench, and Josh Giddey wasn't happy with that. So he requested, he decided that he would rather get traded than come off the bench, which is a little bit, you know, I think that's a pretty lame mentality because like if you are in, if your team makes it to the playoffs and you're in a very good position to win, I feel like you should stick with that team and just listen to whichever role they assign you to and see how far it could take you. Then that's when you start to trade. That's when you engage in a trade. I mean, they could have they were the number 1 seed in the western conference and the their lack of experience and Josh Giddey's lack of play costed them uh the series between um against the Dallas Mavericks so i don't know like maybe they they could have probably gone a little bit farther if they you know maintained the um or if they made the adjustments that they needed but i mean getting alex caruso is still a really good um, it's still a really good deal, and you get you know an, a player that can play defense, and then you get a player that can score the ball rather efficiently. You don't really need another playmaker like Giddy on your team when you have Jalen Williams and you have Shai Gilgis Alexander. So I really think this is a good trade for the Thunder, but I don't think this is a good trade for the Bulls. I'm just I'm just not a big fan of the player that they got. That's really like the and not to mention the fact that, you know, Caruso, he's one of the best defensive perimeter guards that the league has. He didn't win the all def, he didn't win an all NBA defensive team selection this year, but he's really good at defense and it shouldn't be slept on. So, that's all that I have for you in this first segment. So, now we will go ahead and move on to the second segment where I talk about J.J. Redick and his official contract with the Lakers because it's finally revealed how much he's getting paid and for how many years. So I will be right back after this short break. Be sure to stay tuned. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world die? Please, Lord, give me 
be the greatest everybody on the face shit i look around i feel like everybody is the fakest i make this every day and i'm impatient hoping one day i blow up from the basement statement the top is so vacant i don't hear shit that i think is amazing waiting for my day when i'm playing sold out shows for a thousand faces hey give me that crown get in my way and you'll be put down it ain't your place all this my town if i want that shit then i'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? 